let's 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 sort of take this slowly. So, um, what, what does it mean? What 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 is the re what are the requirements to get an accommodation in the workplace generally? What does the law lay as sort of a requirement? Well, first you have to have a disability. And, and in California, disability is defined very broadly. It's a little more stringent under federal law, but essentially it's the same. Whatever medical condition you have has to interfere with a major life function. Um, honestly, it's a pretty low bar because say asthma, well, that's going to interfere with your breathing at times. So that breathing is a major life function, right? So there you go. You, you know, you, you don't walk through life thinking I'm a disabled person perhaps, but in fact, you have a disability that under certain circumstances could require a, a company to provide accommodations. And then really the employee, while of course you have medical privacy, you don't necessarily have to communicate the nature of your disability, the exact specific diagnosis and so on. It, you really do need to communicate your need for a, for an accommodation based on a disability. And it's also helpful if you have a doctor who can back that up. But again, not necessarily required where you're talking about common sense precautions like we are in the Haywood case when people have knowledge of what's going on with this pandemic. So if I have a disability, um, I tell my employer, hey, I have a disability. I need some help. And so you used a, a phrase, interactive process. Can you explain what that means? The interactive process is one that requires communication. There's no you know, structure in terms of what has to happen for an interactive process. But generally the courts say, you know, at least you've got to talk, you know, at least so it could be on the phone, in person, you know, sometimes, of course, these days people communicate through text messages, emails, but it does require the employer and the employee to communicate about those accommodations. If an employee requests the accommodation and the employer just says, no, can't have it. Well, that's not exactly interactive now, is it? That's not, you know, interactive requires people to actually engage with each other. And so it really is a good faith way to make sure that the employer is understanding what the employee needs and the employee understands, you know, sometimes maybe one accommodation can't be given, but there's something else that can be done. And it, it's really designed to at least achieve that process. Again, at the end of the day, what's the goal? The goal is to have the employee there working, performing the essential job functions of the job. And in so many instances, a reasonable accommodation can allow an employee to do it. So it's great for the employer too, especially now with a workforce that you know employers are looking for good people to put into the, into the workplace. And so they're gonna they're they're going to have to look at these accommodations in order to get a workforce that is dedicated to the the, the job that they have to do.